I want to welcome everybody to I want to welcome everyone to Blog Talk Radio and in particular Straight Talk with John J. Nazarian. I'm John. I'm that individual that people often refer to as the private investigator or the security consultant or God knows what else I'm considered. Uh, our guests tonight are Rose and Ken Turner, who also are the producers of the show, and my special guest and someone I consider a friend. Even at times, I'm sure he wonders because of my comments. But I do consider Daniel DiCrisio a friend of mine, and he is one of my guests tonight. I'm looking forward to hearing what Daniel has to say about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, the Kardashian. And I say that with a sort of a biting on my lip, because I just can't figure out how this family of no-talent females ever got their own show. I, however, have had problems because of the fact that I am who I am, and I've got three great-looking sons. I guess the problem is that my sons aren't a bunch of uh, nut jobs who roam around just indiscriminately making slime balls of themselves. Uh, so I'm only assuming that's the issues that we're looking, looking at, and that's what sort of made the Kardashians somewhat famous. You have the mother, go figure that one. Then you've got the sisters. Then you got the stepdad that pretty much always looks like he's got one of those clear plastic uh, Halloween masks on. And uh, that is affectionately referred to as Bruce Jenner. And I remember Bruce when he was a young, vibrant ath- athlete. And to see what he's turned into today, fascinating. But nonetheless, I want to introduce everyone to Daniel DeCristio. And Daniel, welcome. Hey, John. Thanks for having me again. I very much appreciate it. And I love being with you, even though I torment you at times. <laughs> in a good way, <laughs> Daniel. I'm just curious. What do you think? What do you think about this? That's be, that the the wedding that's also being referred to as the scam of the century, involving uh, Kim Kardashian and poor uh, Chris Humphreys. Well, from the get go, I didn't believe it one minute because I know she doesn't like, as you said last time, vanilla. So I just couldn't fall for that. But I feel like. <laughs> You know, it's like I'm sure if she married, you know, the one of the black boys, I would believe it. But for some reason, I didn't wholeheartedly fall for that wedding, nor did I care about it because of that. So to me, I'm really not surprised about this whole falling apart of the wedding and the, you know, the marriage. And I, I you agree. Know, it sounds like the know. Star Jones wedding thing again. You know, Star Jones was a client of mine, and I know her very well. But it's like when she married that guy, Star Jones, and they got all the money from all the sponsors and did the free wedding and, you know, blah, 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 and sounds like the same kind of thing to me. Did Star Jones stay married? No. No, well, longer than they did, of course. Well, yeah, but wasn't <laughs> it, didn't, it, didn't, it, didn't it come out that her husband was a little bit on the, uh, had a problem that, keeping well, his... Well, they were saying, yeah, they were saying Star Jones' husband was gay, and it was a fake marriage. That's what they said. It's not what I'm saying. No, but, no, I um, agree, and I, and I understand that the only, the telltale signs of that, that there was allegedly footprints on the ceiling and they weren't hers... Exactly. The beard was on the other face, right? The beard was on the other face on this one. So the, you know um, that. But you know, did you did, did you? I, I thought it was interesting, and I, it's interesting you say that about Vanilla. It seems like she is doing the shades of marriage. Her first marriage was with a with an African American that was very, 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 very dark. And right. now we have this gentleman who's African American who's very, 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 very light. Now mm-hmm. I'm wondering. Well, even her. Well, what about Kim's first marriage that no one even talks about anymore? That's what that I'm talking about. Guy. That's what so, I'm talking about. So and then Reggie about. Bush was next, you know, and it's like, well, how do you go from you know, milk to dark chocolate to you know, a vanilla? How? Well, I don't know. Overnight, overnight. You know, it's me. I don't uh, buy. It. I just don't get it how how this family has made it to where they're at today. They are a despicable bunch of females who, I mean, I don't know, the young one that's married to the goofy white guy, she seems that's like she's got That's not the young one. That's the oldest one. Oh, the one that I thought was a man. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's, remember Courtney, she's the oldest one, the shortest one, though, with the Courtney, white guy. No, Courtney, no, uh, Courtney, Daniel, Courtney Chloe is the one that. is the one you keep making fun of for being a big girl, that looks like Frankenstein, you said last time. No, Court, no, 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 I thought that that was another brother. Someone told me that it wasn't yes. a man, but it was a girl. <laughs> You're sure you didn't see Rob Kardashian out in the wig, maybe? Maybe that's what it was, but go ahead. I mean, she could pick up footballs with one hand. The girl's big. 
I'm, maybe she's a tight end. Maybe that's what it's all about. Yeah, I think there's a lot of attributes, but I got a funny feeling being a tight end isn't going to be one of them. <laughs> but I've been hearing, you know, since Rob's on Dancing with the Stars, Rob Kardashian, a brother, that I've been hearing the rumors about him being a tight end. Is that true? <laughs> Do you, hear I, you know what? I'm not going to even go there. I have not heard anything about Rob Kardashian. Oh, Do it's all I will over, say, John. Oh, oh my God. I don't know. I don't know. It's rumors, I mean, you know, rumors, rumors, Hollywood rumors, you know. But the um, what you, can you imagine the embarrassment and being that you're kind of in that business with uh, uh, taking care of celebrities and and taking care of their special events such as weddings, special parties, birthdays, and so on. Can you imagine being associated with this wedding and try? And everyone thought they'd get great publicity, and now people are going, "Oh my God, who? I, I wouldn't buy a I wouldn't buy a Vera Wang gown." For the comparison that my daughter might be thinking, oh, it's like the one Kim Kardashian wore. Oh, great. <laughs> Kim Kardashian bag, is that what we should call her now? No, but Kim what I'm bag. curious, I'm, uh, does, doesn't Vera Wang make other shades of wedding gowns besides white? Isn't that supposed to be for like a virgin? How the hell did Kardashian I know. wear a white gown? <laughs> I, think that I would I would picture her probably in a red gown, maybe. A fiery a red gown. Or a chocolate <laughs> brown or something. <laughs> Chocolate well, I think brown. The maybe would maybe the chocolate. Maybe chocolate blonde, uh, chocolate brown with blonde highlights. <laughs> no, I don't want any blonde in that. No. <laughs> what are you working on now, Daniel? As far as your uh, projects and so forth, anything you, can, anything you can discuss with us? Well, first of all, there's music. Number two, I have a new website, and number three, the reality show, and that's about it right now. You've been telling about us that that reality show's got more birthdays than I do. What's happening that's with that? That's right. That's right. But the music is going to, you know, the music is the main thing right now. It's all right. out there. And then the website is danieldecrisio.net for all you people who don't know who I am, which I'm sure there's some. Go ahead, John. Slam me. No, 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 then, no. <laughs> <laughs> and we, oh, we do. Daniel De, say that again. Your website is danieldecrisio.net. Dot net. Net. No, some Japanese company stole my dot com. I had a dot com before, <laughs> and it was huge, and somebody stole it. I had well, this I big told website you, getting all these hits, and well, it was crazy. Daniel, I warned you about hanging out at those damn sushi joints, because you're going to get in trouble, and sure than shit, now we find out that some Japanese guy stole your friggin' website. Well, you know that the Japanese guys like the blondes. You know that. So what can I yeah. say? I'm busted. Oh, well. Hey, what do you think about, uh, have you heard any rumors or any thoughts about Jose Iber's new salon? I heard that it's, uh, to, to put it gently, it's oh, floundering. Oh, 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 I like to say this about that. Okay, supposedly I was told from the inside that they had to close two Rodeo due to the economy and everything going down and go smaller. I come to find out that their salon is actually bigger, this new one, than the last one. So I don't understand that. And then the whole thing about it's an homage to Liz Taylor being purple and such. Oh, please, let's milk it for all it's worth or what? What's that all about? <laughs> I mean, no, it's like, how can you go bigger? We have 6,000 square feet the last one. Now this one's 8,000? I'm, I mean, I'm surprised it doesn't. I mean, I swore to God, that, and, and I'm, I'm so sorry because I met Elizabeth Taylor. I spent time in her home with my son, Mike. She was a, I mean, I, I thought she, I was just truly amazed to get a chance to sit in there. I actually sat in her bedroom with her, and, and she was just wonderful, friendly. You're such a friendly. slut, John. You're such a slut. <laughs> had my, uh, uh, let me, oh let me clarify. Let me clarify. I had my clothes on, and Ms. Uh, there was other people there, too. But she was just a great host. She was warm. She was friendly. You'd never know she was probably the most famous actress in the world. And mm -hmm. i got to tell you, I was so surprised that I didn't hear Jose Iber screaming up and down the street that she was dead. Because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that's probably the biggest client he had left. And the only client. Who's was kidding. But, um, no, he, he, you know, with Liz Taylor, he was very guarded with her, extremely guarded. I mean, when I met her the few times, he was, like, watching every little move. Anything anyone did, it was crazy. He, like, owned her, you know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah, no, let me, tell you, oh, let me clarify that, too, Daniel. If it hadn't been for Adam, Jose's boyfriend, who I adore, Hmm. I would have never. I wouldn't have gotten within three miles of Elizabeth Taylor. Adam and that was little, me. He thought I, Adam and that was little, and that little, and that little, that little Twitter that used to hang around her too. What was his name? Tim. 
That little SOB almost took a shit in his drawers when I showed up at the front door with Adam. He didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, Elizabeth Taylor said, let him in. And that was me, him, in. And I was in. You know, i got to say this. The first day at work at Jose, um, I was assisting him. That was what I did for the first couple of months, and which is very, you know, a big deal in that world. So the thing was, I didn't know that in Beverly Hills, the chairs didn't, in his salon at the time, didn't go up and down. So I'm looking for that thing that kicks and make it go up and down. Why, so would, the chairs, go, why would the chairs go up and down? All his, all his hairstylists went up and down. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I didn't know what to do because I'm looking and I could look at Jose and I go, Jose, um, how do you make this you know, work? And he looks at me and he goes, bend over, darling, you're in Beverly Hills. And I looked at him and I said, oh, you bitch. <laughs> kind of, uh, what, what kind of a haircut was he talking about, bend over? Was he like, was Ani Klein in the house? No, he was looking at my ass. That's what he was trying to do. And I was like, I ain't going there, buddy. Looking you at know, your hair? My ass. <laughs> oh, that's very special, Daniel. Thank you for sharing. I'm trying to get a visual. Of this. <laughs> Sorry, no. I'm, I'm just trying to get a visual of Jose with his little hat and you bending over. This is funny. <laughs> <laughs> he could have. Yeah, yeah, I guess he wanted to. Never mind. I'm not even going there. But anyway, but Adam but was very when, jealous of me. So who was else? Who problem. else? Um, I know that he was very protective. He was, did you know him back when he was taking care of Betty Davis? Who? I'm sorry. What did you say? Did you know, were you working there when Jose Hebert was taking care of Betty Davis? Betty Davis? No. Mm-mm. No. I no, wasn't around that was that another. Long. I mean, I mean, he had, I mean, seriously, he had, he he at one time had all the big names. I mean, there was. No, he was. you got to give him credit. He, he did do all that. He was the guy, you know. And, but now, and, I get, and, I and as far as, and, and, and seriously, on a, on a serious note, when it came to dedication and just, being as faithful as a as a lap dog, he was just as all that and more to Elizabeth Taylor, and quite frankly to several other his high profile clients. I was mm-hmm. watching the wedding of the uh, Gene Simpson family jewels, and um, I forgot Gene that Simmons, she, not Simpson. Whatever. Um, okay. Anyway, Shannon <laughs> Shannon Twit. I saw Shannon Twit there, Twit. and um, <laughs> Jose Bear was in the. Uh, he was one of the invited guests. Right. You know, the well, guy must that's have, a, that's the guy must have found, I don't know how he keeps his puss in the same condition. I don't think his face has changed much. It's gotten a little bit bigger, but it certainly looks He's the same as it has. He's had a few face though. So I know that. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I know that. I have pictures from Christmas parties with them where it's, like, so tight one year and the next year it's not. It's, like, kind of crazy. So, it's yeah. Pretty, if he, at, that rate, at that rate, he's going to have to wipe his eyes to blow his nose. <laughs> What other what other scoops do you have as far as stuff happening in Hollywood besides the Kardashians debacle? You've got um, uh, what's her name that's working at the morgue de- talking to dead people. Which well, is I'm probably sorry, mo- but what's with Chaz Bono right now? I mean, I know everyone's talking about it. Oh, I know Chaz. he's tired. But, you know, on Dancing with the Stars, I mean, I heard now that, you know, he's getting a lot of flack for being too heavy as a dancer on the show when Ricky Lake is being praised for losing 20 pounds. And, like, it's hard on a, harder on a guy. So I wonder if Chad heavy. is going to go back to Chastity after this, you know? I mean, it's like a you know, first happen. of all, first of all, as everyone knows, some women in there, as they grow older, become heavy. I don't know what poor Chaz's body must be thinking. It doesn't know whether it should sit down or stand up to take a piss at this point. And as far as size, when I watched her, him, him, her dance, it was a little bit like watching the old Jackie Gleason show when he would do, and away we go. I mean, I was thinking more of a Mickey Rooney, no? Oh, I don't know. But you know what? i got to tell you something. Watching Chaz dance, it was kind of fun to watch. I know the, the judges were very, very careful not to be too hard on him because there's an audience out there. But i got to mm-hmm. tell you something. Watching him dance from the back looked a little bit like four or five pigs in a bag having a fight. <laughs> I mean, it was really a lot of rumbling and jumbling. And I don't know, uh, you know, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big boy, all right. But talk and, about but, big, you know, talking about big boys, what about Nancy Grace? What is I, on her I, mind? Poor Nancy Grace is sit behind that 
Beth can stay there. She shouldn't. All she needed, <laughs> all she really needed, was a pork chop in one hand and a bowl of Wheaties in the other one. I swear to God, she looks like Miss Piggy in a tight suit. Exactly. But, the, you know, I think maybe that's how they got her on the dance floor before she came out there probably with the sports and then, and then the ultimate insult, of course, is when she went to do a split or something and she farted. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, God, you're just like Mr. <laughs> Etiquette, I swear. Then, you're like but no, the sad part of that, voice. when she did that, I noticed she was looking around the room for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> she ended up blaming her husband probably. Oh, my God. She would have blamed anybody. And, they, and then, of course, when she let her tits slip, I mean, she's just a mess. Yeah, but did you see that? She, like, showed that she was wearing that pasty, though. She cheated, though. That wasn't fair. Hey, Dan, you know, I mean, give, me, give me a break. She certainly has to have enough class. I mean, and again, she really belongs. She's one of those gals that really does belong in a pantsuit. Daniel? Daniel? With bell Daniel? bottom. Yeah. Uh, we got a question from one of our listeners for you. Oh, okay. They want to know how uh, they saw pictures of you on the lo- online with the Kardashians. They want to know how you met them. Oh, that's a good question. Um, probably, ki- that probably that that had that had to happen the day you were all killing snails. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Kardashians. I met them years ago during the O.J. Simpson trial because Chris Jenner and Bruce Jenner were friends with Faye Resnick and the Hiltons, and I was friends with Faye Resnick and the Hiltons, and. Chris and Bruce used to hang out with Faye and them all the time. I mean, I've been at parties with them where, like, Mary Fran, if you remember her from Newhart, she had a party because she was friends with all of them, and I was at their place with them. And, and then, you know, the kids, I knew all the kids, but they were, like, 12, 14-year-olds back then. So, you know, but I was friends with the parents. So through the years, we've all stayed in touch, even after the O.J. Simpson trial, because even her husband, you know, the Kardashian husband, the, the, the defense attorney, you know, I knew him as well. So... It was just a small circle, really. But now, through the years, since Kim's become a star and the whole family, and I've seen Kris Jenner actually go from a very conservative type woman with pantsuits and turtlenecks to what she is now, which is totally like a 180 for me. But and Kim, for some reason, she's turned a little bitchy now. She's not as friendly as she used to be, and she thinks she's all that, you know. So whatever, it's cool. She thinks she's like. Paris Hilton now, you know, with the attitude. Oh, talk about nobody. How about Paris Hilton? Where has she been? Oh, Paris Hilton? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Paris, Who's Paris you know, Hilton? I forgot you who know, that was. Hmm. You know, Paris Hilton is still rich, obviously, because of her other exploits, but she must just be dying on the vine. She must, at this point, be looking like the proverbial beautiful grape who has now turned into a raisin that nobody particularly wants to touch. Because, I mean, really, the Kardashians have so trampled her play. Yeah, but you know what happened, I think? is Paris doesn't change, and there was no one else involved with her, so it got boring and uninteresting to everybody. I mean, the Kardashians, the whole family, they turned into these train wrecks. There's not just one. you got Bruce and Chris <laughs> and the kids and, and the hill. And you got, and you know, the other thing, goes, the, one thing about the Kardashian girls, they're wonderful at finding football players, basketball players. I mean, yeah. I'm surprised that they don't do... Um, uh, I'm surprised they're not big sponsors of, like, Jerry Curl and stuff. Oh, that'll happen next. Probably when they get their little babies. <laughs> when their kids start growing up, they'll push them in that area. Uh, it just have, <laughs> but, you know, poor Paris Hilton. I just did a story on her uncle, Ronnie Hilton, who mm-hmm. spent, like, I don't know, what was it, Rose? 29000 or 19000 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. that was, that That's was, it, Rose? That, yeah? Come on, give us more. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, he, no. He, uh, so our money on strippers and uh, Chinese food. Hey, yeah, right, that? right. That's strippers right. That's fun. right. No, no, I had the fun. I had the opportunity to review his American Express bill, and he likes to hang out, with Ronnie. And and I think the only claim to fame is that he's an heir to the Hilton fortune, and that he's the uncle to uh, Paris Hilton. And other than that. They have That's nothing not going to get you much today, though, being the uncle of Paris Hilton. That's not going to no, get you in no. anywhere right now. So he's just going to have to wait because it's not going to work. Let me no. ask you something. Have, 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 have you ever met Paris Hilton? Yes, I've met Paris Hilton numerous times. Um, Kathy actually was, like, one of my best friends for a while. I love Kathy. And, um, you know, Paris like Paris always been Paris. I don't know how to explain it, but she's big. She wear, not like a big persona. That's her. Does she wear underwear? 
Oh, well, she's getting out of a car, no. <laughs> she's getting out of a car, no. <laughs> no, I don't think, no, I really don't think she wears underwear, nor do I. I don't wear underwear. I don't own one. Oh, God. Hey, oh, God, I can't believe you went there. <laughs> Thank I you don't. for that. Oh. You know, at your age. I don't. At I your can't age, wear them. I'm surprised, I'm surprised at your age you're not needing of the support. <laughs> hey Sean, I'll text you a picture of my privates later. Okay, you can check. Oh, and tell me. well that's good then. You can probably you can probably put it on a real small disc. <laughs> no, that was yours. Remember, I just sent it back to you. No, I not me. Small. I couldn't open it up. Put you on a thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Lots of Twitter at each other like where? When's when's your next when's your next party coming up for you? I know you throw these events every year for your birthday party. What do you got planned for this year? Well, this year, since um, the music and all that's been going on, we're going to do something, again, late January. Cause, but you have to stay, John. Every time you come, you can't have one time you stayed like five minutes or ten minutes and you left. Well, what you didn't have about? anybody. You, the reason, well, it's simple. You didn't have anybody come over and entertain Don't be me. mean. Don't be mean now. No, no, no. You, had, no, you throw great parties. I was just a little bored because there was nobody entertaining me. I saw somebody with you. And you then, yeah, and then. Would, I guess that you that wasn't entertaining enough the person you brought. No, I you know I get the attention span of a German Shepherd. I'm easily distracted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do is throw a oh, biscuit by me. All you gotta, all you, right gotta all you gotta, all you gotta do is throw a biscuit past me, and I'll and I'll follow the biscuit. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> John's like but, the German Shepherd dog sniffing everyone's crotch at the party. It's really bad. Yeah. At least I don't. At least, at least I don't crawl around my hands and knees singing the Kibbles and Bits theme. Hey, baby, that pays my bills. <laughs> <laughs> the Dan Stallion and Innocent Celtic is my friend, you know. It's not for real. <laughs> but the price well, where, I charge, where, you know, second Where are you involved. planning, where Daniel? Where are you planning on having your party this year? That I don't know yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it in New York. I don't know where. Seriously, because um. It abs- actually, all these parties for me, they're approached by the venue. They ask me if I, you know, they want to host my parties, and I end up just picking someone. But it's usually last minute. I mean, well, last year, it was planned in like five days. I mean, that fast. So it's, it's kind of um, unbelievable how big they turn out, though, these parties. You know, one of the things I want to mention, it's a little bit off subject here, is that recently there's been a great deal of controversy over the picture that a uh, Republican group posted of President Obama with a bullet hole in his head. And I have to tell you something on a very serious note. I find that type of uh, I, I find that really offensive. Say what you will say what you will about President Obama, but he is the president of this country. He is our commander in chief, and I find it just well, really, very, very funny, distracting. Yes, you know, that's not a funny thing, really. It shouldn't be. You know, no, with a the, the assassination the assassination of an American president is never a funny thing. And not even in the form of a cartoon. No, I know. And uh, I just thought that the, uh, and I tweeted about it, and I thought it was really in bad taste, and I continue to think it was in bad taste. And I, and I am sure that whoever did that has been visited very closely and in very personal, uh, up close and very, very personal by the United States Secret Service, of which I employ a few of the off, you know, retired members of that group, and they are probably one of the most prestigious law enforcement agencies in the world. And um, I hope that they uh, reviewed the individual's thoughts on what made them do such a uh, terrible thing. It's a hideous thing. It's hideous. Yeah. I mean, it was, death is not a funny thing to be poking fun at like that. I mean, it's for anybody, I don't care if it's a, any person, you know. You even talked about the the young people committing suicide, they're gay or this. Or, nothing's funny when it comes to this. And it's not something to parody a president, especially anybody. So I shame on them big time. Shame on them, really. You know, in the res- I'm glad you brought that up, Daniel. But our, our our segment on gay teenagers committing suicide because of being bullied uh, was produced by Rose Turner, and uh, her her outreach and the comments and the guests we had were absolutely nothing short of incredible for me to what I was honored to have the opportunity to speak to the parents, and in particular one young man by the name of Trevor. And uh, to hear their stories and to see what they're doing to make things better and the, um, the the uphill climb that they take every day and just getting through life either without their children who have committed suicide or for a young person having to fight the the ongoing um, well, attempts to distract them. Well, isn't it hard enough to fight some everyday life and then 
have people do bullshit like that bullying and stuff. I mean, there's enough in life that you have to deal with. You don't need an extra thing on your, an extra bag on your back. You know what I mean? And no. it's hard enough. And I, it's just terrible, especially for young people who don't know who they are yet and they're still, you know, figuring it out. You know. Well, no, and I, I think that, you know, and I don't know what your days in high school were like, Daniel, or, or going to school, but, you know, you, you're you kind of a big guy, and certainly no matter what your sexual preference was back in those days, I had a funny feeling that you wouldn't take too much shit from anybody because, like I said, you you're you know, you've been, you always looked to me like you were probably athletic or, you know, you were you were big, you know, tall. You right. Were, you know, no, I played football, I did wrestling, I did track, and but the thing was I was – I mean, I had both, we have to say that, the guy and the girl in school. So I had both going on, and I didn't care. So, I mean, it wasn't so open, but the point was, to me, I, you know, there were people in school that were keys and whatever, but not with, you know, I wasn't like that. I didn't care where, for that. Where night. did you Where did you go back? Where did you go to school, Daniel? Why do you want to know, John? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, there's a subject matter. And, yeah, because I want to go back and look at your yearbook so I can have a good laugh. No, seriously. Ah! Why? Where Where did you go to school? Because I'm just curious your experience um, when you were growing up as far as if you were harassed or if you were, you know, in any way intimidated or, or forced to no, feel bad. No, I wasn't me. I was not intimidated at anything. I'm, I'm no way. I'm the same as I was in school. I'm the same way, my own beliefs. And my poor mother, rest in, God rest in peace, had to deal with me. I mean, you don't understand that poor woman. She said to me, she had to learn to talk a whole new way with me because I was so progressive as a kid, you know. So, I mean, so I... all was, you did... So if you if somebody bothered you, all you did was went and got more hairspray. That, no. I had some fist fights. Trust me, I got in some fights, and I wasn't the one who lost either. I'm a... I'm telling you, pretty boys are tough bitches, man. Don't fuck with us. Cause, well, I'm sorry, excuse me. Because we will kick some major ass when we have to. And I'm, a, I'm like a UFC fighter, okay? So you better watch out. I'll pull well, your hair. You can pull my hair, I'll pull your hair and rip it out, too. But go oh, ahead. Oh, God. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still reflecting but, back on the comments you made about Jose and you in the salon and his hat and his bending over. And, I mean, no, the, the chairs don't go up and down. You know, it's I, funny because people have always ended up, like, not picking on me, but putting me in a position, no pun intended, John, because of how I look. Here we go. Why? What have I ever said about I've never made any because comments Because I know you can run look. with that, like I not, said, because of how of fact, I look. Now, go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. Somebody your age, you still look very good. Hey, I'm 20. <laughs> you know, I remember, you got to remember, I met you a long, 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 long time ago when your first musical career was taking off. and you In were, 1955, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, you know you were you were really on top of your game, and again, it's, it's you 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 have not changed much through the years, and um, other than the we, fact you are as you we, are, change, we all are going older. You have to change, or else you're not older. an interesting person, right? You got to change. What? I mean, just, you have to change, or else you're not an interesting person, right? You yeah, no, change. You, no, I've changed a great deal. I, let me see. I started by losing my my hair. My <laughs> diaphragm flipped. I mean, you know. Your diaphragm. Are you a Chaz Bono? Is that what it is? No. Oh. God. Well, look, That's folks. Easy. Once again, once again, we're getting close to the end of the show, and I want to thank Daniel for coming on and entertaining us, and I love his stories. Rose, Ken, thanks again for a great show. And V. Foss is off tonight, and um, this is Straight Talk with John J. Nazarian. Good night. <laughs> 